Let's talk about the drum kit sounds you get with Logic, and I'll primarily talk about acoustic drum sounds using a plugin called Drum Kit Designer, and we'll also talk about producer kits. And a lot of what I show you in this video will make a bit more sense if you watch the previous video where I go over Logic's drummer feature. As I had explained in the last video, each drummer has a unique drum kit assigned to him or her that matches their genre or style of playing. But I also have the flexibility to choose any drum kit for any of the drummers. So let's stay on our drummer Kyle, which uses the SoCal kit by default, and we'll change the drum kits in this lower area of the library. So that means, again, the groove's gonna stay the same, but the drum sounds will change. For right now, I think I like this East Bay kit maybe a bit more than the SoCal kit for our imaginary pop rock song. I think there are some similar drum samples between the two, uh, but the East Bay kit has a bit of a fuller sounding kick drum. It has some nice sub frequencies in it that uh, maybe you can hear if you're using a subwoofer. And also it sounds a bit more ambient. You can hear the room sound a bit more in it. Uh, but I may realize that after I say record bass guitar, that I'll wanna go back to that tighter sounding kick drum of the SoCal drum kit, because I may find that that kick drum works or blends better with the bass guitar. So again, we have the flexibility to change the sounds um, using this method. And that's gonna lead us into uh, talking about our next topic, which is the drum kit designer plugin to access and change those individual drum sounds themselves. If I press I, I can open up the inspector and take a look at what's happening on this track's channel strip. And it looks like we have a software instrument track because it has a software instrument on its input. If I double click on that, uh, it's gonna open up the drum kit designer plugin. Uh, we can also see that there are a couple of insert effects plugins on the chain uh, along with a bus send. If you remember from a couple of videos back, what we have here is an instrument patch. And each one of these drum kits in this list here is an instrument patch. And you can see the elements of the channel strip change as I select the different drum kits. Let's take a look at the drum kit designer plugin. So if I have a MIDI keyboard controller, I can play each individual drum sound that way. I can take my mouse pointer and click on each of the individual drum icons and you can hear them that way, symbols included. And you'll see that some of them um, open up uh, an area here on the left and they all have this area here on the right where I can edit them further as well. Let's take a look at the kick drum. And here we have a gain knob. So the gain is going to ad adjust the volume or gain of the individual drum or cymbal selected um, in relationship to the rest of the drums and cymbals. So this is a good mixing tool. If you find that, you know, here in this case, if my kick is too loud or soft, I can bump it up a little bit or down a little bit to match the rest of the drums and cymbals. Dampen is going to shorten the sound or dampen it a little bit. So let's drastically move this up to 100 so you can hear what I mean. Probably wouldn't want that, but this is going to um, take some of the sustain away from the drum, maybe just to clean it up a little bit if I need to in the mix. And then tune, of course, is going to change the pitch of the drum or cymbal uh, down or up. Each of these crashes here, there's a left crash and a right crash. You can hear the difference. Each of them have separate um, controls for both uh, the left and right cymbal individually. And then there's an all tab with controls for uh, both crashes globally. So both the kick and the snare in this case, in this instance, will, ha will give you the option over here in the, on the left side to change the actual drum being used on this drum kit. So right now the kick, the kick drum is this East Bay kick, but I can also use East Bay 2 and hear that, and East Bay 3. I'm gonna keep it on this first one, I like that. And then the snare drum <clears throat> gives me three different options as well. 
and I think I'm going to keep it on this first one here, which um, sounds and looks like uh, the type of snare that we use at um, predominantly at most of our LCBC campuses, which is based or modeled off of a Ludwig uh, Black Beauty snare drum. If you want to go a little bit deeper and you're looking for more drum sounds at your disposal or you're looking for more complicated or sophisticated mixing routings for each of your individual drum sounds, then there's something called producer kits which allow you to do this. Um, what I just showed you is more the simplistic way to handle your drum kits and a lot of people like to keep it that way. They don't want it too complicated. Totally understand that. But let me show you producer kits really quick. So over here in the library, we have our drum kit folder. We have East Bay selected. That's the kit we've been working with. And if I scroll down here to the bottom, there's this kind of hidden folder called producer kits. I'm going to open that up. And you can see that a lot of the producer kits names are similar or exact to what we have in our normal drum kits over here on the left. And you can see there's an East Bay version of a producer kit on, on the right side. And each of the producer kits also has a plus after the name to show you that it's a producer kit. So let's click on that and open the East Bay producer kit. Now when we take a look at this track, we can see that it has become an aux track. And we know that because it has, instead of a software instrument on its input, it has a bus path as its input, in this case bus 3. And over here, if I press this drop down arrow, we can see that now we have, instead of a normal patch, we have a track stack patch. So I talked about track stacks a few videos ago. And all these tracks inside this folder stack are routed to this aux track here. Let's open the mixer for a better view. I'm going to use screen set 4 for that, which is programmed on the LCBC template. Now I'm going to open the arrow here to show me all the tracks inside the stack. So all the outputs are going to bus 3, which is the input of our main aux track here. We can also call this our mix bus for the drums. The first track, called Overheads, holds our software instrument, the drum kit designer. And all the rest of the tracks look like aux tracks. But instead of having a bus path routing as the input like we're used to seeing, we have what looks like drum path assignments as their inputs. So what's happening here is that each of the individual drum sounds of the drum kit designer are routed to these individual aux tracks. If I play the MIDI keyboard, I can hear that the sounds are still the same. It's still the East Bay drum kit, but now we have more options for mixing. If you take a look at the kick drum, we can see that there are now two different kick drum tracks, a kick in and a kick out. Uh, that make up the kick drum sound for the East Bay kick drum. So I'm going to assume that these are two individual samples of the kick, one with a mic placed in the drum and one with a mic placed outside the drum. Let's go ahead and solo both of these channels and listen to the kick by itself. And now let's solo the first one. So this gives us a bit more of the attack um, and there's some sub frequencies in there. And then the kick out. There's some higher mid-range frequencies here and some of like the woofiness of the drum. The snare is now broken into top snare and bottom snare. If you need more attack or punch on your snare, you might want to try bringing up the volume of the snare top. And if you need a bit more of that sizzle, that wire snare rattling sustain sound, you can boost the bottom snare mic up a touch. Moving over here to the room mics, these are really going to change the character of the whole drum kit sound and add or take away ambience as you adjust the volume of the fader. Let's open the drum kit designer one more time. And as I click on each drum and cymbal now, I have access to Logic's entire library of acoustic drum samples for every drum and cymbal and not just the kick and the snare. Let's listen to a few different tom-tom options for during our bridge section tom groove that we created in the last video.
Another option you get uh, when you use a producer kit uh, on this drum kit designer plugin is that over on the right side near the bottom, I can also choose whether or not I want the selected drum or cymbal sound to be sent to a few different ambient mic options. So we already talked about the room mics. There's also an overhead option. And overhead mics are the two mics that are typically placed directly above the cymbals or some, somewhere close to the drum kit. And leak is interesting. It simulates the sound of drums leaking into other nearby mics. And I think it can give you a more natural and lively recorded sound of a drum kit if you blend it in. And let's listen to how these sound and how they blend in with the rest of the drum kit. As I click on the toms for the East Bay producer kit, I can see over here that they are not being sent to the room mics. So they definitely are coming in on our tom high, tom mid, and tom low channel. You can see they're also going to overheads and leak. Uh, but let's say I did want to add them to the room. All I need to do is turn this slider over to the right. So let's listen to how the sound changes when I do that. I'm going to solo the room A channel strip here. Cool, so now I have my toms in the room mics. They have that nice roomy, big sound on them. But hey, you may say, I think the toms are nice in the room, but they're a little bit loud compared to the kick and snare room mic volume. So I can also adjust that. And the way I'm gonna do that, let's solo our room mic again, is I am going to adjust the volume of the toms with the drum kit designer gain knob. So let's make sure we have all selected here in the tabs, which is going to change the gain of all three toms at once. And now I can adjust the volume of the toms going into the room mics via this knob. Let's, let's adjust that. Now just be aware that when you change the gain knob in the drum kit designer for your individual drums and cymbals, it's going to affect the volume, in this case of the toms, in going into your overhead channel here, going into your leak channel, and of course, and most importantly, going into your direct channels here, tom high, tom mid, and tom low. So in this case, what I might do to compensate for that volume loss is I'm just going to select all the tom uh, direct channels here, and I'm going to boost the volume of those to get back some of that volume that I lost. The A and B slider down here is for the room mics. You can see we do have two room uh, channel strips or tracks uh, for room mics. So far in this kit, every drum and cymbal, if they're going to a room mic, they're going to room A. But let me swap the two and I'll let you hear the difference. I want to talk about another aspect of volume control using the software drums. And this concept is really for software instruments and MIDI programming in general. So we know we can change the volume of the drums with the Logic Mixer and with the Drum Kit Designer plugin. And we've seen how those two interact. But you may ask, well, couldn't you just adjust the volume of the drums by changing the velocity of the MIDI notes in the MIDI regions? So you're in effect streamlining your workflow and not having then to go and open up the plugin or the mixer to change those volumes. 
Okay, to answer that question, let's take a listen first to our coarse drum groove that we came up with in our last video. I like the vibe of that, but maybe the crash cymbals are a bit too loud. So I'm gonna do a little experiment here and play two different versions. In the first one, it's gonna be normal, no change at all, uh, which is a repeat of what you just heard. And in the second example, I'm gonna lower the velocity of the MIDI notes of just the cymbals, but then I'm gonna boost the gain of the cymbals in the drum kit designer to compensate for that volume loss. So if I'm lowering the volume with MIDI velocity and then raising, raising it again in the plugin, it should sound the same as the original version, right? Well, let's find out if it does. Now let's select all the symbols and I'm going to bring the velocity slider down for all of them relatively to around, let's say just around like 33. Then I'm going to go to the drum kit designer plugin and make sure I have the symbol selected and all here in this tab and take the gain and let's, let's boost it up about 11 dB. So I'm going to put this at 9 dB and that's going to compensate for the volume loss that we lost here by dropping the MIDI velocity. The first version cymbals feel more driving and they cut through a bit better. And in the second version, they feel a bit weaker and less intense, even though the cymbals in both versions are around the same volume. Now, maybe I'm gonna like the vibe of that second version better musically for my song here, but my point is that changing the MIDI velocity on software instruments, I'm not only changing the volume of that instrument, but I'm also changing the character and the tone of that instrument. And in the case of the cymbals here, I'm losing the energy and I'm losing that sizzle of that cymbal, which is maybe something I don't wanna have happen. And, and the reason this happens in the case of the drum kit designer plugin is because of a process called multi-sampling used to create the software instrument. And I won't get too deep into how technically this works, but if you can imagine when you hit a cymbal with a stick and I hit it at a lower velocity or quieter, that cymbal is going to be more mellow. It's gonna have lower frequencies in it. And as I start hitting it with the higher velocities, that cymbal is going to open up. It's gonna become more brash and it will contain higher frequencies. And again, this concept is not just the case for MIDI software drums, but really for any acoustic instrument uh, like software piano, uh, strings, and even many synth presets will be programmed like this. So just to be clear and to recap a little, when I'm changing the gain volume within the drum kit designer or the volume fader on the overheads track, because as you can see, the cymbals are routed there, I'm only changing volume the tonal characteristics are changed by altering MIDI velocity. So hopefully you have a more accurate perspective on how all these things work together. MIDI velocity is usually best used on a note by note basis when you have one or two or maybe a few more notes that you need to adjust and overall volume changes may be best served using the plug-in gain volume and the mixer. One more thing with the drum kit designer you can see this little drop down arrow here and you'll, you'll find this feature whether you're on a producer kit or not. Um, this is gonna open up a few more options for adjusting gain or volume for some of the other percussion instruments. And a lot of uh, Logic plugins will have this drop down arrow. So don't miss this. Uh, many times it's gonna reveal um, options that will help you out in uh, shaping and designing your sounds. Thanks everyone for sticking around. Have some fun creating your drum parts and your drum sounds.